name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. Never thought that I'd be so excited about an organ. I told my, my 15 year old self that I would be this excited about an organ later on. I would, I would have been very surprised. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's ironic this morning that uh, our readings, well let me start here, uh, I mentioned earlier that my intention was this morning to do an instructed Eucharist where we walked through the Mass, uh, <coughs> prayer by prayer, sentence by sentence, and analyzed it and talked about the history and the meaning and the theological depth of the canon of the Mass. But as I read through, um, last week as I read through the readings for today, and I thought ahead to next week when Bishop Lyons uh, will be meeting with us. Both of the, the epistle and the gospel reading had to do with authority. And I said, okay, God, <laughs> I'll, I'll redirect. I will uh, use this as kind of the, the starting point for maybe uh, prefacing his visit next week and talking about uh, what it really means to be the shepherd of the church, and what does it mean to be uh, the flock? Um, Paul em implores us, as we just saw in Romans, implores us to submit our souls to the authority given to us. Uh, what, a, what a tough lesson this can be, especially for those among us who just seem to have a more rebellious, anti-authority type of personality. Um, I know I've got one of those individuals in my house. Uh, my youngest, and she's not here, so I'll talk about her. My youngest, Sophia, it, those of you who know her already, you know her. She is free-spirited. She is uh, not really moved at all by peer pressure. She is uh, somebody who longs to be different and not follow the crowd. Some awesome characteristics. But of course, that to an extreme means that uh, defiance seems to be as natural to her as putting on her shoes. Um, certain quantities, these are, these are healthy attitudes, I think. Not one of pure rebellion, but one of analyzing and being a voice of dissent, maybe, when the uh, authority structure seems to be unfairly weighted or on a path of corruption or injustice. Now, granted, this particular little girl that I'm talking about thinks every command that her parents give her is representative of a corrupt parental structure. Um, so there's definitely a, a healthy balance here. But for all of us, submitting to authority can be difficult. Those of us who didn't grow up uh, Episcopalian or, or Roman Catholic probably have the most trouble with this in the context of the church. One of the most important characteristics of our tradition and one that uh, definitely distinguishes us from other Reformed or Protestant churches is the retention of Episcopal authority. We have bishops to lead us. This isn't just a, a personal preference of Anglicans or something that we just kept because we didn't know what else we were going to do with all the purple cloth that was in the, you know, the church closet. No, this is a, uh, a fundamental conviction of our church that God has placed, and we see this in the, in the biblical account in Paul's letters, God has placed authority, shepherds, bishops over the care of congregations. Um, but the bishop is not above reproach either. He's not, a, he's not a sinless figure who should never be crossed or, or questioned. We saw in our Wednesday night service, we read through Galatians 2. Um, and maybe you remember reading Galatians 2, but in the very beginning of it, Paul talks about the fact that he has this very kind of seemingly dramatic confrontation with Peter. He, he calls him out. Uh, Peter is one of the chief leaders in the Christian church, but he's acting in a way that's not in line with the truth of the gospel, Paul says. Peter was eating with Gentiles. Um, all of a sudden, James and the other 
you know, Jewish leaders of the Christian church walk in, and Peter all of a sudden acts like he doesn't know the Gentiles. He pushes away from the table and pretends like you know, that relationship isn't there. Paul calls him out. He's saying, that's, that's hypocritical. If what we're teaching, if, if, if the truth of the gospel is that all people are united in faith, that there's not Jew or Greek, but we're all part of one family, your actions don't align with that, Peter. Peter wasn't above reproach. Peter wasn't above being called out when he was doing something uh, that wasn't in line with the truth of Christ's gospel. Um, bishops are shepherds of the church. Think about that. Bishops are shepherds, those who protect the flock from all outside danger. But even, of course, shepherds can lose their way. Even shepherds can become inflated or prideful or corrupt. We're all human. But the function and the authority of the bishop, when they've submitted themselves to the authority of God, it's one of those most powerful tools that God uses for the health and benefit of the local church. Uh, as Joan and I were driving home from his basketball game yesterday morning, um, of which, by the way, he literally just danced the entire game. <laughs> He, I don't know. He danced when he was on defense to distract the man he was guarding. He danced when he was on offense to celebrate, you know, good passes or made baskets. Uh, it felt like I was watching West Side Story or something. While all of a sudden, you know, everybody just breaks out into a dance. Um, I don't know. We were driving home, and as I sped around uh, a curve, all of a sudden, middle of the road, causing me to slam on my brakes, and I was very thankful nobody was behind me. All of a sudden, in the middle of the road was this huge hawk just sitting there. I think he had a, you know, a mouse or some kind of you know, rodent or something. Um, but it was huge. It looked like it was you know, the size of Sophia. It just stared me down. As, you know, we pulled up to it, and I said, Jonah, look at this hawk. And I kept waiting for it to fly away, fly away, fly away. It didn't. So I just literally stepped, stepped on my brakes and came to a complete stop. And for four or five seconds, it just stared at me. It was pretty, it was pretty unnerving. Um, hawk's eye is, a, is amazing. The hawk spends much of its time watching. If you ever see him up on the you know, telephone lines, just looking down, watching, so attentive, so observing. I think the hawk is a great assembly for, for the function of a bishop. The role of the bishop is to watch for predators or for, for prey, uh, survey the, the spiritual landscape, look out for false doctrines or ideologies, to take care of those in its nest under, under his care. Always attentive, always mindful, always surveilling the landscape. Um, I'm not sure if you read my email, and I mentioned it earlier, but we've now officially been accepted as, as a parish of uh, the Anglican Church of North America. Um, our diocese actually has two bishops. Um, the, the bishop of the, the primary bishop of the diocese is, is Foley Beach. But about a year and a half ago, he was actually moved in the position of the archbishop of the whole Anglican Church of North America. So he actually brought in uh, Bishop Frank Lyons as his assistant. And i got to tell you, we could not have two better, more godly leaders over this church. Um, I know firsthand the, the hearts of these two men. They're proactive and they're protective of the flocks and the clergy under their care. I'll just randomly get you know, text messages from Archbishop Beach just saying, hey, I'm praying for you today. I'm praying for you. I'll get calls from Bishop Lyons and say, hey, how, how are you doing? How are your people doing? What are you struggling with? In a world of, of false doctrines and of a, a wayward moral compass, we need more than ever godly leaders who can work to protect the people of God and lead them boldly in the kingdom work. Um, praise God for the leadership in, in our church. The bishops that he's uh, placed over us. 
Um, I encourage you to, to keep them firmly in your prayers uh, in the months and the years ahead. Pray for them. Pray for their, their health. Pray for their families. Pray for all the parishes that are under their care. And pray for the people and the clergy as well. Uh, let us close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful um, for the ways that uh, you've providentially moved this church from season to season. We're so grateful that you are merciful, that you are compassionate, and that you are patient with us. God, we pray that you would turn our hearts for the things of your kingdom. We pray that you would, we would be passionate about the things that you are passionate about. We pray that we would uh, be uh, submissive to the, to the spiritual authority that you've given to this church as well. We pray all this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.